Hey everyone, Sean here. First of all, I'm praying that you and your family are safe, secure, and healthy during this time of national uncertainty. If you're worried about how you're going to sustain your construction business during these uncertain times, I want you to check out the video I just posted of a group coaching session I had with members of the Built to Build Academy. Now, this is a free resource made available to you in an effort to help the construction business owners that need a plan to sustain, if not accelerate, their businesses during this time. This isn't a lead generation thing for me. You don't have to give me your email address. There's nothing to buy. There's, there's no ulterior motive. It's just a bunch of construction business owners from all over the world coming together, talking about what's going on in their communities and in their businesses, sharing ideas of how to provide value to their customers. We talk about what you should be doing right now to keep your business strong, how to market your value, and how to be a messenger of positivity to your employees, your customers, and your communities. We cover a lot of ground in this group coaching session and the video is about an hour or so long. The only thing that I ask is that if you find value in this video, please share it with others, leave your comments below, and feel free to ask me any questions if I can help in any way. Thanks to the members of the Built to Build Academy for giving me permission to post this video and sharing their ideas and their struggles with this community. If you'd like to learn more about becoming a member of the Built to Build Academy and joining us in future group coaching sessions, then head over to builttobuildacademy.com and join the wait list. The next cohort is open for enrollment on March 30th. And in the meantime, go watch the video, share with your friends, and let me know how I can help you. Be safe. And it's, it's open. There's no agenda. You got questions about anything specific in your business, we can, we can address those too. But uh, just wanted to create some value for this group and get, some, get people together and, and just talk and, and see if there's some, uh, some and let's see if we can solve the world's problem. So, with that, I'm going to just open it, uh, open it up, just unmute yourself and, um, and who's got, who's got a question or who's got something that's, that's been affecting them because of, you know, are you shut down in your area? So I'll shut up and I'll get out of the way and let you guys talk. Yeah, go ahead, Chris. Yeah. Just un unmute yourself. It's, it was first come first serve on this bad boy today. Oh, guys. Um, I had an interesting decision to make. Um, I got a text message last night from, uh, my main guy, Matt, um, I have two in-house employees. My main guy is Matt. He's and tell, in tell everybody where you're from. Just so, just so everybody. I'm in, I'm in Monmouth County, New Jersey. So okay. right by the beach on the coast of New Jersey. Um, Matt reached out to me via text last night around 1030 or so. Um, he's an EMT on the side. So he reached out to me last night and let me know that he was involved in transporting his first pest positive patient, wanted to let me know. I had that scenario in the back of my mind, but wasn't exactly prepared to handle it 1030 last night. Um, had to figure out what to do as far as reaching out to my other employee who's going to be working next to him. Um, ultimately ended up splitting them up for the day because we have two jobs right now, fortunately, that no one else is involved on. There's no customers in the houses. It's basically just two empty places. I sent one of them to each to kind of just end the week and kind of give me the weekend to figure out how to proceed from there. Yeah. It, did he, I mean, as a, as an EMT, I'm sure that they are following certain procedures as well. So from what he told me, you know, they have all their procedures in place. Their protective equipment is still not an issue. He had no reason to think that he is infected, unhealthy, you know, transmit it to any of us at all. Like he had no reason to, you know, say I shouldn't come to work tomorrow. Um, he just obviously felt that he should let us know. Yeah, no, that's, that's good. Uh, yeah. Yeah, somebody gets sick now. Well, uh, that's that's interesting. I mean, but that first responders and EMTs. I mean, that's their that's their job, and and a lot of them have jobs in other uh, in other industries too. So again, it, this this just brings up a lot of different situations, uh, and you start rethinking about like, oh, what is our policy for that? When someone calls in and says, "Do I do I come in? I'm able to come into work today." but I can't, do you pay them? Do you, I don't have an answer to that, but, but I know that anytime something has come up in my business, like it, it, whatever happens over the next 60 days, everybody on this call, I would imagine has a half a dozen new policies that they need to interact in their business. Cause when this thing comes up again, I know I'm talking about just the virus, whatever the next hurdle is in your business, you're going to want these, policies in place. So great, great question. So you were able to split them up 
are you get, are you going to be able to, is he going to go get tested or is that protocol for the EMTs? He's, he, according to his superiors at the, you know, with the paramedics, he has no need to get tested at this point. They don't, they don't think he was at risk for any real exposure because of their processes and procedures and the protective equipment. So as far as he's concerned, his, uh, you know, employer on that side, he's all good to keep going. Um, yeah. So my decision, you know, between now so and he's, Sunday. He's able to keep, he's able to keep doing EMT work. He's able to keep doing EMT oh, work. He's able okay. to keep doing my work. Yep. I thought yep. you were saying like, Hey, once they're exposed, like they can't, like my guess is the EMTs, probably no offense probably have better policies than you and if he can work there he's probably pretty good but it yeah. does make it certainly does make you pause and think so yeah. um no that's good thanks thanks for sharing that anybody anybody else have uh, in their in their businesses have any policies in regards to i don't know something something i mean you can't say similar this has never really happened before but i guess the question would be any, anybody produce policies for their business that came out of some kind of crisis or some kind of uh, you know other thing well, one, one thing that for a lot of you that are, and I know this has probably cr crossed your mind, whether it has to do with shutting the job down, stopping work for a subcontractor or laying, laying an employee off, you never think about that when you start, when you hire somebody. It's like, oh, how am I going to lay them off or how am I going to fire them? And you probably operate for years before that ever comes up. But now is the time, even if you don't have employees, even if you have some 1099 subcontractors that you know how I feel about that. They're, they're really your employees. Like you got to get some policies in place, especially for those that are actual W2 employees. Um, and I've said this, I think earlier this week is you need to research and find out the information. If you have to lay them off, it's so much better when you call that person in and sit them down and tell them, Hey, you know, we, we got to lay you off, but then you hand them a packet. You put your arm around them and tell them you love them, take care of them, ask them if there's anything you can do. And then you give them a packet and say, by the way, here's, here's where you need to go. Here's the paperwork that you need to fill out. Here's a letter of recommendation. Here's what your you know, severance or we'll, we'll pay you through the end of the week. Give that person that information. I'm telling you, when they walk out, they're not going to think bad about you. It's actually going to provide some comfort in a horrible situation. But if you don't have those things in place, like if you got to lay somebody off and guess what, this applies next year when things are up and going and you have a really bad employee and you got to fire them or whatever, you, same packet, most likely, they're just not going to go file for unemployment insurance or whatever. And the other thing to do is, and I'm not up to speed on all this stuff. And this is why it's really important for you business owners to do this research right now is, is, um, uh, oh, great. I'm glad that Jennifer's on here. I'm going to ask her a question here in a minute but is to do a little bit of research on the government programs that are coming out right now. Um, and they're probably going to change day to day or week to week as they try to get on top of this and that, and their policies and the money that's going to be available. Um, you need to, you know, you need to stay on, on top of that for if you're in a situation where you might have to lay somebody off. One other thing I'm going to jump to Jennifer real quick. She's one of our profit first professionals that comes out and, and uh, does a great job at our live events. Um, and Jennifer, can you uh, speak to some of the, I, I know that I think they, they just pushed back the April deadline for taxes that are due. Can you speak yeah. to that a little bit? So any, yeah, any federal income taxes that are due on April 15th, so corporate or personal is now July 15th as well as filing. Yeah. You asked me, it's still April 15th, but yeah. yes, because yeah. Um, I don't want to work all summer. I know y'all <laughs> Yeah, so not me. Um, but yeah, they did just do that. So if you do have tax bills due, then you do have some grace to try to get that money together to do that. Yeah. But as your profit first advisor here, you need to treat like that money's due. Yeah. If you've got the money, pay it now. Like don't, if you know, we talk about don't steal it, it's, it's still going to be due. And the other thing, and, and Mike McCallowitz actually, he's been posting regular updates in, in uh, the profit first group as well. What you have to realize, if you are in that super cash crunch or whatever, and that that tax filing delay is going to help you out there a little bit, don't steal from those taxes. But the other thing, they're going to push the April 15th date out, but the July date is not pushed out. So you're going to have back-to-back -back tax payments due. April 15th, 
and then July. It's actually, and, it's actually, yeah, it's actually three payments because you've got your April estimate, your April balance due, and your June estimate, which will still be, so that's three pretty close together. Yeah, that'll be, so that's, so it's April, the April 15th for 2019 is pushed out. You'll still have your, your estimate. June estimate due and then the, the filing. And again your April out. estimate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, there are, it's not solving any problems. It's just no. pushing all your problems right together in a short span of time. It's right. So, the down the road. Yes. Yeah. For but sure. it, but the other thing that I've been, been uh, telling people is whatever you're thinking about doing over the next six, 60 days to keep business going and, and stay out there in front of your customers and, and, and marketing, we'll get into that a little bit. If anybody's got some questions about that is, but whatever you, whatever ideas that you come up with and you start implementing, over the next 60 days, guess what? That's what you need to do for your business all the time. Like if you're now thinking like, Oh, I got this new idea. I'm going to try this thing out. You should be trying things out in your business all the time. There is life is not going to go back to normal. There's going to be a new normal now. And especially the construction business owners that want to sustain through this and even accelerate beyond this when things get back to the new normal are going to be the ones that, that are creative and innovative right now. And then they continue being creative and innovative going forward. So there's not a lot of contractors uh, two weeks ago that were familiar with zoom. And now the whole world is familiar with this platform now. And if we've been working together, you know that I've been preaching like, Hey, you don't need to meet with your clients on site for that initial phone call. You can now, I, I even posted something on Instagram um, the other day about how, how you would introduce this into the sales conversation when they say, we say, oh, okay, yeah, great. Let's, let's talk about the budget. Yeah, you want to come out here and meet. No, we charge for that. Uh, oh, you're going to charge me to you know, look at my project. No, I can look at your project right now. Are you familiar with Zoom? And then you send them the canned email that gives them a Zoom link, gives them a video made by you to show them how to download Zoom onto their desktop or onto their mobile phone. And then you give them a calendar link to book an appointment, a Zoom appointment with you, and they can walk you around their, their project. Two weeks ago, that would have been unheard of. Now, everybody knows how to do that. So just a, a, little, um, a little tip there. Um, one more thing, Jennifer, that I want to ask you that Mike brought up. If you are experiencing any kind of expenses related to this outbreak, uh, Mike had mentioned um, tracking those expenses specifically on your books so that if there is some relief or there is some other accounting thing that the IRS allows for, you've got to be able to show that and prove that. And you don't want to try to retro retroactively go back and do that. Do you, do you know, can you speak to any, anything about that? Uh, I would be really surprised if they came out, that the IRS came out with anything, but what a lot of people are talking about is their business insurance and their continuation of business or because, or the lack of continuation of business um, and talking to your insurance agent about that. There are insurance policies, but a lot of them don't allow for natural disasters to pay out. This is deemed to be that right now, but doesn't mean that they're not gonna make some exceptions. I don't know. I mean, there's so much that's still in flux, but I'd be surprised that there's a special deduction what they're probably going to do is, and they're talking about it, are tax credits for um, sick leave. So if you have anybody who's directly affected and you're paying sick leave, so definitely tracking that. Um, there's going to be some other things that they're going to throw out there. They don't know what they're going to do yet. Yeah. So it's all speculation. And I really don't like speculation. You just keep tracking really well. And you kind of know where you're down yeah. Well, parts are, so. well, what I would, what I would take out of that over the next two weeks, call up your insurance agent yeah. and have a conversation about your policy saying, Hey, I, I know we're probably not covered, but, but this is probably a pretty good time for me to get, you know, cause if you're like me, when I had my general liability and uh, my other insurances, I, I just signed up for them and paid the bill or whatever. I didn't even know exactly everything I got. Then my truck got stolen from my shop and uh, realized that I didn't have this thing called uh, marine insurance. Anybody know what that is? Yeah, I was like, I don't have a boat. I don't need marine insurance. Why would I need that? And then I had $10,000 worth of tools in that truck. They weren't covered, even though everything in the shop and everything else 
what, you know, was covered. I didn't have marine insurance. And then my insurance agent explained to me, oh, the reason they called it was marine insurance. I, I might get this wrong was when boats used to dock, they would insure the property on the boat as well. So you had to have marine insurance or whatever they call it for that. I didn't have that. So <clears throat> lost my truck and 10,000. The, the truck was covered, but the $10,000 worth of tools inside were not. So great opportunity to call up your insurance agent and have a conversation with them and say, can you explain to me in non-insurance terms, what exactly, what kind of coverage that I have? And if something comes up, workers comp, general liability, you know, whatever, like, I mean, Chris just said, I mean, I don't know, somebody shows up on your job site, they don't inform you that they're sick, they get other people sick. Now your employees look into you. Is that workers comp? Is that something that's covered? So everybody go call your insurance agent um, and have a conversation. Um, what other questions or what, are, what are you guys seeing in your uh, area? I know, so Shelby's in California. You guys are on basically house arrest, right? Oh my gosh. They closed on down the daycares. So I've got my three-year-old, my one-year-old and my seven-year-old all home. I'm a homeschool mom now. Yeah. Martial <laughs> law there never... in, in California. Has anybody else seen um, any mandatory like shutdowns where you're at? I know that some, some Daniel is the, are your building departments or inspection departments shut down? You had, you'd sent me a text the other day. Yeah. Um, buildings all shut down, residential building in PA, uh, commercial building. So yeah, we're, we're, we're not doing anything right now, but I really look at it as a good opportunity. You're talking about procedures, um, really kind of dig into some business work and, uh, uh, some of the coursework for build to build. Um, so I'm trying to spin it as a positive to, to work on some processes and systems. And I actually reached out to my guys today, you know, what ideas do you guys have? Let's start brainstorming just so we uh, moving forward out of the gate. When we get back to work, we can really hit it hard. Yeah, that's good. And by the way, when you're logged into the built to build Academy and you're going through that, we track all your progress. I can see how far you've made it in each lesson. So we know, we know if you're shut down, I better see that progress bar, you know, go up on your account over there. So some of you are like, Oh crap. It's like the CIA back there. You no, know, he's tracking everything. Um, what else? What other, what other things are you seeing in your area? What questions do you have about? Yeah, go ahead, Drew. So I'm in Louisville, Kentucky and our governor is doing a great job just being really proactive about social distancing and everything. And it's spreading fairly slowly, but people are super nervous. Uh, the thing that I've experienced recently is banks. Uh, I have two jobs that were, well, I think one was a HELOC and one was a cash out refi, but they were financed, approved, and closed on their loan probably two weeks before this whole thing hit. Um, and neither of them have been funded. One of them actually received a payment for the loan, uh, but neither of them have received the money um, or a check or anything and, or any answers or explanations as to why. So the one customer was like, we'll start once we have the money, which was uh, not so fortuitous for us, but beneficial in that their home isn't tore up. The other had the first payment and they started. And so now we're two payments in and we're sitting, we can't, we had to stop at the start of drywall. So we hung drywall and we're going to we're going to clean up and move out and make the electric work uh so that they can have it's a basement it's not a they're not dependent on the living space they were just uh they had some water damage we repaired it uh and and then kind of like a theater room that they just added a wall to put a projector in but all that to say like they're stuck with no explanation pnc bank just isn't giving them an answer i don't know if that's related to the markets or how we can even do anything about that. Yeah. That, and that's another, another point to add that kind of language into your contract. Hopefully you never have to use it, but if you get shut down for some reason or your project shuts down for something outside of your control and maybe even something outside of the owner's control, it's going to cost you money. So you need some language in your contract where if you get shut down, then you need some, some language in there that says, within 48 hours of a shutdown notice or whatever. And it needs to be official. You probably have to write a letter if it's in your contract to make sure and put them on notice and check with your, your state and local jurisdictions of, you know, how you need to notify them. 
but you need to have in your contract that state that states we will stop work at this date and then within five days you will be issued an invoice that brings us up to the current work so especially you know if you're doing progress payments or whatever and like like i say hey bill early and bill often um if you're ahead on that then you need to refund them some money but it's there's a certain cost associated with that you can say hey we'll shut down if you've paid a you know progress payment that's all they owe. So you got to be able to dig back into the numbers, do the job costs, and you might have to refund uh, some money, but it's okay also to, to charge them a remobilization fee. Listen, it's not your fault. Um, mm -hmm. And a remobilization fee should be included in your contract for any reason uh, for a shutdown outside of your control. Cause it's going to cost you money. Now I don't know if it's 250 bucks, 500 bucks, whatever it is. Uh, but that's some more language that you should probably have into your contract. And for those of you that do, uh, specialty trade stuff where, you know, um, I, I think we've got somebody that makes countertops and some other things. Like if you get shut down in the middle of making that thing, you know, Hey, they gotta, they gotta pay the full price because some of the, some of those things that you make, it's just like, there's no value in half of it being done. Uh, you still got to pay for the whole thing. It's not, it's not a, it's not a com comfortable conversation to have, but that's why the, the person with the pay most paperwork, will will come out on top now you can i'm not saying that you're like this hard-nosed business person you know every case is a little bit different but it's nice knowing that you've got that option built into your contract when when these kind of things uh when these kind of things come up so um what are some other people seeing in their areas or what are they or what are they experiencing anybody anybody else experiencing a, a slowdown or have anybody experienced like maybe even a ramp up where people are like hey we want to get this thing in before people shut the money off. Corey, yeah, you were, what's going on with you? Yeah, pretty much everything here is shut down. Uh, Where are you at? School, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Okay. Yeah. So everything here is shut down. Restaurants, everything is shut down. Um, projects that I had scheduled, they're saying they're on hold indefinitely. Um, and I've gotten no requests for new work for probably two weeks now. So I'm not sure how long that's going to last or how to try and sustain that for an indefinite amount of time, I guess. Um, yeah. So, so how were you getting, how were you getting leads before? Like how would they come in? Just word of mouth? Word of mouth and online. Yeah. Both. So I haven't changed anything that I've been doing online. Just there's no progress with projects here at all. And they're just, they're holding off on them. So uh, they're not really given an end date either. So. Okay. And and what tell us a little bit about your business again? So I do countertops. Countertop. So okay, yeah, yeah. Vanity tops, yep. So I do a lot of small projects. So um I probably have a half a dozen jobs to finish up and then after that there's just nothing coming in at all. Okay. Well, I I would I would ramp up your efforts and you know word of mouth, you know, just making sure that everybody knows, "Hey, we're still here, we're still working." Um, again, I don't know that I would send out an email to people because we're, we've all got hundreds of emails and no, you know, if you're like me, you're not right. reading them anymore. It's like, I really don't care <laughs> what you're doing. You know, like I got one from, from my, my credit card company, um, how we're reacting to the coronavirus or whatever. And I'm just like, and they, and their whole message was, I guess I read it. So it was, I guess it was somewhat effective. They were just <laughs> pushing like their online services. And I'm like, that's how I've always dealt with you. I've never, you know, interacted with anybody with my credit card company anyway. Um, but that's what I was saying is, is now, you know, if word of mouth uh, was the way you were getting that and then that starts to dry up, then that's not working anymore. We need to get something else out there. And, you know, just again, you're an expert in countertops. I guarantee there's still some people now, again, it may be delayed, but they want what you have. They just don't know about you yet. And, they might be, you know, willing to buy or they're, they're, they're thinking like, Hey, this is a great time. Maybe you can advertise how quickly you can move now because other projects have been, um, been put on hold. So you can maybe talk about the value of the speed at which, or how, you know, how much quicker you can produce a project. Now, anything, anything that provides value to your customers, what, whoever they are is better than nothing. Don't just sit back. Like I said, over the next 60 days, these ideas that you have, they need to be, you know, this is a great time to test out new ideas. And just remember, you're just trying to solve other people's problems. That's the message that, that you want to put out there. So, so if we potentially get locked down for 
three weeks, a month. Um, do you think there's any uh, advantage in doing that kind of thing at that point? Or do you just sit back and try and hold on and make it through it? <laughs> do you have enough cash to sit back? No. Okay. Then you don't, that's not an option for you. I'm just being yeah. real with you. Like, yeah. Yay. Hey, we don't have the option to sit back. Now you, mm -hmm. you may pivot or there may be some new products. Uh, there may be some new products that you can offer. This is where the, the innovation, the innovation comes out and do some brainstorming. That's why I want to offer sessions like this is just saying, okay, so besides countertops, what do you tool? You know, is, is there some, some retooling that you could do that to offer a new product or a new service? That's mm -hmm. something similar. I don't know. That's what I'm asking. Like what, what are some of, what are some of those ideas that you've had in me? Like, Oh man, I would love to do this. Sure. What, yeah. What, I mean, what I, are, I do what vanity are tops and ship them so they can go anywhere in the country. Not everyone's in the same situation that we are, I guess. So that's one thing. Um, smaller sinks. I mean, yeah, there's, there's different things that I could make for sure. Okay. Yeah. Again, great time to, instead of just sitting back then just, you know, test them. It's a great time to test them saying, you know, I, I haven't seen anybody like that advertising, like we can ship direct to you right now, you know, or, or whatever. This is, again, that's a great, I mean, right there, that's a great idea. It doesn't cost you anything really to put that out there, throw something on social media um, and then tell all of your network of people that you're getting word of mouth from like, Hey, we got this, by the way, you, you may not be aware, but we have this service. We have the ability to do that. And somebody's going to be like, Oh, well, that's, that's great. You know, I, maybe I've got some installers in my area or whatever. Um, but I really want, you know, what it is. Um, it, even if it doesn't generate business, that kind of stuff is going to keep you at top of mind and in front of people. And when the supply chain gets back and everything gets opened up because your name and your company is out there and top of mind, you're going to be the first person that people think of when they're, when things are back to normal. I mean, gotcha. they're not going to be back to normal ever again. This will be, this will change, <laughs> but, but get out there with a, with a new message. And I think that that's a great message to test out because it doesn't really cost you anything. Do you think social media is the best way to test that kind of idea? I think everywhere is a good test, a way to test that. Like, okay. like everything, like don't just depend on social media. Um, the phone, like get on, get on the phone with, with supply, with your suppliers, with your vendors. And this is what everybody's doing now. This is what, what solid business owners are doing. They're just, they're just talking to people and it's the, the relationships that are built out of this kind of stuff. That's going to make you accelerate on the backside of this wave, whatever this, whatever this wave is. And when you realize, man, when I just get really focused on calling people, networking and asking them, the other thing too is call up your suppliers, call up your vendors and call other people, you know, and don't look to sell. A lot of people are, are trying to short circuit that. Mm -hmm. Then just call them up and just say, Hey, I want to check in with you. How are you doing? How are things, you know, how are things with you? And then they're like, man, I'm, I'm really got, I, we're fine here. I'm, but I'm really glad that you, you know, that you called. And, um, and then when things pick back up, you're going to be that guy that was just calling in to check on them. You're staying, you know, top of mind. So a little bit different Avenue on marketing, but you're marketing your reputation just as much as your mar marketing, you know, your services are, are getting, you know, getting people to send you, send you money. Okay. So yeah, just come up with a, you know, come up with a, a flyer, talk to people, just make you say, Hey, the next week I'm going to call 10 people and just check in on them and see where that conversation goes. And those 10 people know another 10 people and somebody might call you and say, Hey, we're not ready right now. We're not really sure. But, Again, that's where you go into your value ads and your design services. Hey, this is a great time to lay out your project design. In fact, you know, I can, we can actually handle some of this stuff uh, remotely right now. And it's just another way. It's not going to, you know, it's not going to cost you anything because you've got some time right now. Mm -hmm. um, so go ahead and line people up and just say, hey, let's do a preliminary design consultation about this uh, project. And we can do it remotely and we'll have your project lined up and ready to go. Uh, when we're allowed to get back out of our house again. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. What else? What, what other questions do people have? Anybody, anybody scared? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Ashley. Yeah, I, it's, I'm not scared, but I have a kind of a funny statement just to share with you guys that, you know, we, we implemented the PFC system six or seven months ago and we, we did well at increasing our price price point a little bit, but the part where it said, Hey, I want you to go and cut down 10% of your expenses. Like today we were just like, I feel like we're already 
kind of on a bare bones expense budget anyway, so we had not really cut our expenses. And it was amazing in the face of a pandemic how quickly you can look at your budget and say, well, you don't need this, 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 and this. And so we realized we're saving about 12% this month just immediately with like a bit of a spending freeze on things that just were honestly more discretionary that we thought we couldn't live without before, but now we kind of feel like we can. So my husband and I were kind of chuckling that like, it's a lot easier to cut those expenses, <laughs> you know, yeah. right now with what's going on. And so I think we, we actually um, kind of came up with like a three tiered plan of like, Hey, what do we need to do now just to start kind of being a little bit more tight with our budget. And then kind of what's a trigger point for really buckling down and cutting you know, the next tier expenses all the way till, you know, it's just maybe back down to myself and my husband working out of our house for a little bit, but um, it was really helpful kind of exercise. And I just thought I'd share that it was a lot easier to do that expense, uh, the expenses with what's going on right now. So. Yeah, no, that that's great that you, that you shared that. I, I'm a big Dave Ramsey fan and we went through Financial Peace University, you know, it was probably 10 years ago. And I remember a statement that he said in there about, you know, cutting back your expenses. And he said, you know, you, you got to get really, if anybody's a Dave Ramsey fan or you've listened to, you know, his stuff, he's, you know, he's pretty in your face about it. Uh, but he made a statement um, when we were going through Financial Peace University and saying, listen, for all of you that are struggling with cutting expenses or establishing that emergency fund and setting that cash aside, and this is just kind of, you know, brutal honesty. He was like, listen, if it came down to, uh, if you had to come up with $10,000 to save the life of one of your loved ones, everybody has the ability to go find $10,000 very, very quickly. You get very, very creative in those kind of situations. And that kind of really stuck out to me saying, gosh, I don't have $10,000. But then when you start thinking about it, you're like, well, I could sell a car and I could sell some furniture and I could go get an extra job. And I can, and then you start adding it up and you're like, oh, I could probably get to $10,000 pretty quick. Same thing with your business. I'm like, man, it'd be really we're busy now. We got a bunch of clients. Yeah. I don't know where we can cut any expenses. And then everything gets shut down and you're looking and you're like, Oh, wait a minute. Um, you know, we don't need that anymore. We're not even using that. And then do we, do we even use it to its full potential? Like I say, unfortunately this hasn't hit us personally yet, but even if it, even if it did, my wife knows that's the reason we don't have a dog. First thing to go is the dog. Sorry, kids, no dogs, no extra food being spent you know? Um, so you can find, you can find that money. The way that you have to do that is you just got to dig in. Um, sorry if any, I'm a dog lover. I promise. I do love dogs. I just don't, I can't afford them right now. Mike's laughing because Mike has a huge dog. Uh, that is, I don't know how much, I don't even want to think about how much that dog eats, dude, but Mike's, Mike's doing okay. You're still doing, you're still putting roofs on today, right? Doing some siding work. You telling me I should go tell my wife we got to get rid of that dog? Nope. Don't mention my name at all. I don't want to be, uh, you know. Tell it to you. Yeah, yeah. Tell yeah. All 130 pounds of that white polar bear. <clears throat> yeah. So a another thing, uh, just to kind of you know encourage you about w the mind frame of your customers. Um, I was on a mastermind group uh, call yesterday, and it was for a bunch of uh, small different small business owners working with uh, one of my business coaches. And, um, it was, uh, uh, there was a, a business owner on, on the call and he made this statement and he kind of just said it just off the cuff and then kind of moved on to something else, but I thought it was really impactful. And so we, we were talking about how to use mobile meetings and zoom, you know, uh, uh, video conferencing technology and that kind of stuff to serve your clients and to meet with them and to keep driving business forward. And what was interesting about that is he said, yeah, I had the free version of zoom before and kind of dabbled in a little bit, but I signed up for their paid platform. So I could do, and then he listed all of these things in which he's in, in which he's going to use Zoom to serve his clients. And right there uh, answers a lot of questions that people have been asking me, like, "Oh, well, you know, do you keep pushing the sales? You don't have to worry about sales if the thing that you have provides so much value. Your customers won't think twice about hiring you. And if it applies to something like the Zoom platform, I mean, this guy said it like he had the free version for a while, and then the value was there. He knew how to, you know, he knew because the, the company had made it so easy for the, for him uh, to purchase from him. 
he made a decision, purchased a premium product, and then went on and used it. The same thing applies to your business. And that's why, like Corey, what we were saying before, it's so important to stay out in front of people because you never know when that thing's going to hit them. And they're like, you know what? I think this is a great time to buy a countertop. This is a great time for us to finally, for whatever, you never know what's going on in someone's life and when they're going to make that decision. And so that's why you kind of keep the value up there. You do not cut prices. And here's the other reason. You got you to gotta think about, Best case scenario, worst, listen, if this thing goes on for months and months and years, we're all screwed, okay? We're all gonna be in a really bad spot. But you gotta think about it, like what if it's not so bad? What if in the next 60 days, the supply chains are back up and everything's back to you know this new normal and things keep going again and you've cut your prices, you've stopped selling on value, you're gonna get trapped into projects that you can't make a profit on at the exact time when you need to be making the money and accelerating your business. So that is, the, that is the problem with cutting your prices or trying to think, well, we need to do something different. No, the thing that you need to be doing different is being more innovative and creative and, and still talking and pushing out that value. Because if this thing is over in the next 60 days, you don't want to be trapped in a project where you're like, oh, we cut our prices because of this short, you know, this relatively short window. And now we got to suffer through getting through this project and it's, and it's costing us more because we're not, we don't have the opportunity uh, to go serve other, other people. So just keep that in mind there, you know, heck, I, if I own stock in zoom and Lysol wipes and toilet paper right now, I wouldn't worry. I wouldn't worry about anything. I don't necessarily have a question, but I think just to kind of get a, a ball rolling, <clears throat> just to share, first off, if you see behind me, I'm in an addict of a shop. I don't have, y'all have some really good, good looking offices and I'm a little jealous of your paintings and, and uh, Mike's, Mike's world behind him. Uh, but we're, you know, humble up here. So no, don't, uh, don't say you're humble, dude. When we were working together, that thing wasn't, that was like last year. You're just lazy. I am still, the shop yes. All right. All right. Just being real. All right, go ahead. I, yeah, Pete's like, put some drywall in there. I'm like, no, I don't want the drywall dust. Um, <laughs> one of the, some of the things we've done recently, <clears throat> we planned a project. So we, we, we thought through the last few months of things we've done. We planned a project with a customer who lived in Las Vegas and is moving to Louisville. Um, I think I've seen them face to face for probably four hours, maybe five. Um, but we did the entire project about $130,000 between the kitchen and painting the whole house virtually through our management software. Um, so, so we did that and it worked. Um, zoom would have probably made that even better. We did a lot of FaceTiming. They have an iPhone, we have an iPhone. Um, and then also just we're subcontracting to a subcontractor for trim because one of the things we realized you know, back when we were working with Sean early before Profit First actually came out was that we have to get billable hours. So we have a, a trim partner, they do trim to super high end stuff, places we're, we're hoping to be in the years to come. We just send our guys to his jobs to get piecework done, you know, $90 a door, hang it, trim it, put in a drawer box for $60 or, you know, it's piecework. So they go over there and they just throw effort at this million, $2 million project. And uh, he called us today and was like, you know, I've got about four weeks of work solid. If you guys could just come to a job and work every day for four weeks, um, you know, we're nobody on that job. We're a subcontractor of a subcontractor, but it's billable hours. And just looking at my guy's time and thinking, I got to get him out the door somewhere. Um, we sent an email out to all the vendors and trade partners and industry relationships and previous clients and let them know that we just started a new um, handyman service and we're offering uh, handyman or home service subscriptions or packages where for X dollars a quarter, you can get two, three hours of, of maintenance on your home. We'll come in, we'll change your air filter, we'll change all your light bulbs, we'll inspect every room. Um, and we're just, you know, we're doing that because somebody said, hey, can I just give you $250 a quarter to come over and run through my house, tell me what needs fixed and let me know the extra. And I was like, yes, you can. <laughs> and I will send you an invoice. Yeah. Um, and, and then also just realizing that I can literally plan and start a project without ever being in the home. iPhones, they measure spaces, uh, different 
you know, build book, builder trend, they all allow us to interact with a customer in such a way where all that information can be gathered and collected and shared uh, before a project starts. You don't have to be there. Um, I think I think one of the things if you're like, how do I approach this tomorrow? Don't eat lunch. Don't eat breakfast. And the only meal you get is going to be dinner. Do that a few times and then apply that way that that felt to the way that you work. Like you're going to do whatever you have to do to get dinner if that's all you have coming. Yeah. Uh, and just kind of think of it that way. Call everybody. Don't text anybody. Call everybody. That's kind of like my, I'm irritating people with calls. Hey, how are you? What's going on? So I wanted to talk to you about this thing that we're doing. Um, but just, I mean, you have to be that guy. So yeah. Everybody's yeah. friend. And, and I think that like, if you've got, you, you know, we all have, seems like maybe a little bit of extra time on our hands and we're wondering like, okay, how do we look at our policies? How do we look at our procedures? One of the, one of the things that you can do, and this just falls right into the value add type of sales calls. And I kind of mentioned it earlier is just write a, an email, just spend time this evening or sometime over the weekend or whatever, and go look at Zoom or go to meeting or one of these sorts of things, download Loom, L-O-O-M. It's a screen capturing thing. I've talked about it before. It's a Google Chrome extension. And just spend some time and record a, a, a video that, sh that shows your clients like how to download Zoom. And it's free for them, by the way. Zoom is free on their end. Um, you, I, I don't, I'm not exactly sure we have the paid version here, um, but just walk them through how to download it and then how to get it on their phone and then write an email. So the next phone call that you get for, you know, an inquiry, just get out in front of this thing and say, Hey, here's part of our process. In fact, we've been meeting, um, we've been meeting, um, uh, virtually, uh, for months now. Now that's not a lie because you have been with me. So people will buy exactly what you sell them. Okay. So it's not a lie. You can say, Oh yeah, we've been meeting, you know, mobily before it was a cool thing to do. Right. But, have this, this email response, um, that you can send to them. So when they call up and say, okay, well, you know, we, you can't come out and look at the project until, you know, until we're off a of lockdown say, so, no, we can look at it right now. In fact, let me go ahead and get your contact information. That's just part of our process. We offer all of our clients is the option to meet, uh, virtually. And if you get this app on your phone, then you can walk around your project and we can do an initial, initial consulta consultation. Normally we charge for these things. See right there, law of reciprocity. Normally we charge for these things, but this is just a value that we provide to our customers, not only now, uh, but it, you know, in the future too. And all of that can be pre prepared, put into an email that says, hey, here's, you know, here's this information, go download it, and then start looking into those automated calendar type apps where they can book an appointment with you. And just test it out. Um, that's something really easy that you can do and because everybody's going to be scrambling and you can get it, you know, ahead of the game on this and start sending these type of emails out to people uh, next week. Now I realize like people are hearing one thing and it's that virus. And I just want to take everybody who's watching me and say, here's life. Life is happening. You know, yeah. uh, today I posted a banjo related thing that was also my project manager got engaged. Oh, and here's a bathroom we're doing. Yeah. Um, and just, just kind of honestly, Sean is a great example. Follow him on Instagram. The way that he does it is extremely relational. Um, and I think you do a really good job of not being canned. Uh, I don't know. I, I love it. And it's kind of the model I'm, I think I'm going oh, to have. Oh, geez. Right, You're well. a stud, bro. Yeah. Well, I got that record now. I can show my kids because they're totally embarrassed by the fact that their dad has like 12,000 followers or whatever, you know. Um, in, anyway, behind the scenes, it's, it's not as good as it looks, but, um, the other thing you had mentioned deep work, which I love that book. It's a great book. If you've got some time listening, you know, to podcasts again, this is just, you know, time to level up another, um, another book that's very interesting that I'll recommend. And I've been kind of talking about this and I'll get the overall, uh, I think I get the overall idea of it. Right. But again, talking about this next 60 days or so, uh, the book is called the 12 week year and what the, what the author talks about, there's some nodding heads of people is, is basically the point is like, don't take a year for something you can do in 12 weeks. And especially in this time, this applies to profit first. This applies, uh, applies to your sales. And what Ashley was saying earlier about like expenses is shift your thinking from what we would do over the course of a year in our business, shift that to 12 weeks. So where we would maybe drop in and look at our expenses 
at the end of the month. Um, do that at the end of next week. And so it's, you're going to drop in and plan things out more frequently over the next 12 weeks. And then you treat the next three weeks like a quarter and the next six weeks as, you know, six months or whatever. And what you want to do is say what money is coming in and what money has to go out next week, just like you would, you should be doing on a monthly basis and plan out the next 12 weeks in the same way that you would plan out the next year. So pick up that book. I can't remember all of the details, but it's a phenomenal book and a great idea. And it's, it applies exactly to the situation that we're, that we're all in uh, now is just get out that calendar, get out that Gantt chart, start plotting things out. We did that uh, a couple of shop talk sessions ago um, where we kind of showed the next 12 weeks and then just say, here's the money coming in. Here's what I'm predicting the money going out. This is what's going to be left. And then see week to week, if you can predict the balance in that bank account, and you, like Ashley said, you will find all of those little things that you can eliminate. And like Corey was saying too, it's going to give you, when you start doing that deep work, it's going to, you're going to generate some really great ideas. And those ideas are probably not going to cost you anything than a little bit of time. Put those idea, ideas out into the world. And that's a great thing about social media and see what, see what comes back. And when something comes back, then, then test it, tweak it a little bit, a little bit more so that when everything ramps back up, you might find that you have a completely different service. Like Drew was talking about, you know, doing some handyman services or some other things like that. So, um, what other, what other questions does anybody have? We're, we're almost up at the hour. I, I didn't really have a time limit for it. Yeah, go ahead, Ashley. I just had a question, you know, we're out in, um, am I unmuted now? Yeah. Yeah. We're out in Colorado. Um, so we're kind of, Somewhere in the middle of the two extremes, I guess. We are um, like our local municipalities are closed, restaurants are closed, but um, title companies are open, construction companies are still open. But my question is, I'm just kind of curious um, to you, Sean, or anybody else in the forum, um, if you guys have started um, having any supply chain issues with lumber, um, you know, anything we're in general contracting and like we're, we haven't seen it yet, but we're just, you know, obviously that's like a huge piece of um, our business. And so it would be nice to kind of get a sense of where that, where that is in the world. So I was just wondering if anybody had any sort of, you know, Intel <laughs> on uh, what that's looking like. Yeah. Go ahead, Jennifer. So like it or not, my husband does work for Lowe's. I'm, um, I just got off the phone with him after my client call and he said they just got their suppliers cut off. So as of today, they're not getting any more shipments from Pennsylvania. So I'm yeah, pretty sure that's going to start rolling across the country, but he just found that out. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So it's, again, it's, it's probably coming. So that's why it's important to get out in front of your clients and your current projects and say, Hey, we're not seeing the supply yet, but we, the supply chain kind of shut down yet, but it might be coming. Just letting you know, here's our plan. And it's not a very big plan. It's, uh, it's for the next three weeks. When we get word, here's, here's what we're going to do. One, two, and three. After that, we don't know yet, but your, your customers, your clients, and you know, you start talking to your vendors so you can kind of put a plan in place. And it's just the, the businesses that sustain during this and then thrive after this will be the ones that are communicating with their customers or their potential customers constantly. And again, that's just a, that's adding value. No one's expecting you to call them up. And when you say, Hey, just, just kind of letting you know, this is what we're seeing. Uh, and we want to keep you up to speed. They'll really appreciate that. And like Drew said, call them. Don't, don't email them. Everybody's getting inundated with emails um, right now, which is kind of hypocritical for me to say, cause I'm sending out a bunch of emails promoting the launch of the built to build Academy. So I don't know. We'll see. Everybody's nodding their head. They're like, yeah, I've been getting your emails. I've been deleting them. That's all right. I can see when you delete them too. I know that you don't. Yeah, yeah, Dustin. I know you don't, you know, you don't even open them. I can tell. I can tell. Like I said, we track everything back here. Somebody, I thought I saw some other hands go up. Yeah, go ahead, Chris. So to just kind of pigtail on that, um, that supply chain question, um, just around here, we're not seeing anything shut down. All the suppliers are just changing to delivery only. Um, but my question related to that is, is it a good idea or a bad idea to try and almost, not stockpile, stockpile is not the right term, but get ahead of material on jobs right now. Like, like I mentioned before, we have two jobs that were in houses where there's no one in there. So provided we don't have some kind of mandated shutdown, we can keep going to them. 
And I'm kind of trying to get ahead on getting materials to those jobs. So that way we have almost a backlog of stuff ready for us. And I would imagine the answer to that question comes down to as long as the money adds up to account for those supplies. But I guess, I guess my overall question, is that a good or a bad approach to it? Yeah, go ahead, Mike. A little bit. So with us, um, we're in Madison, Wisconsin. So there hasn't been any shutdowns, but we're down to, like you said, only trucks in and out. No customers can go in the stores. They have designated pickup areas and so on and so yeah. forth. <clears throat> um, to answer that question, um, we are pre-ordering everything we have color selection sheets for and signed contracts for. Because in our contract, it also states that if you cancel, you lose 10% or whatever that contract looks like. So that way, as our suppliers are notifying us right now, get your orders in so that way they can get them in. And then when it's ready to go, we're still, now we're ahead of the game because our production doesn't slow down. As long as you have that relationship with the supply company where they'll stockpile it for you until you call and have them deliver it. I wouldn't run out to Home Depot and buy 300 two by fours and put them in my shop. That's just me. I wouldn't do that because I'm not a supply chain unless you had to or whatever that looks like for you. But for us, we are, ordering everything we have assigned color selection and contract for right now instead yes. of waiting, and waiting another week. That's kind of what I was referencing. Like I'm the two jobs that we have right now, it's molding packages, tile selections. They're already um, done. We wouldn't necessarily have the tile drop this week because we're not ready to set, but it's ironed out. You know, it's, it's a couple weeks off. So I'm thinking get it here now so that way we can roll through it. Yeah. And, and so the way that I would look at that too, um, is also, I would, I would probably go ahead and buy materials, um, and, you know, stockpile them if putting those materials in place got me to my next progress payment. So if okay. like, you know, Hey, depending on how you're billing or whatever, I might buy three weeks of materials that I know that I can put in place. Even if things get shut down, we'll be able to work you know, use those materials over the next four weeks, five weeks or whatever. And then we'll get to that next point where we can bill again. Um, mm -hmm. That, that might be an indication where I'm not going to try and buy too far ahead. Cause I want to, you know, I'd certainly want to conserve my cash, but I am going to spend money on things that I know I can make money on. So I would probably buy materials, especially if it's going to push me to a progress payment. And that's another, another great excuse. Another great reason to reach out to your, um, to your, uh, your clients and say, Hey, I know that we've got this progress payment. It's out probably based on the schedule, two months, you know, four weeks, whatever it is, but we're worried about our supply chain getting shut down. If that happens, just wanted to have a conversation. Would it be okay to bill you a little bit differently than what's in the contract? Um, because you know, we, we, we're not trying to take advantage of anything, but we want to make sure that we get the work put in place. And so this progress payment, if, and if they agree to that, then make sure and write up a change order, even though it's not going to cost anybody anything different, just make sure that you're now adjusting your, your, your progress payment schedule. If it's tied to a milestone, tie it to like a work in progress sort of thing. And that way it can kind of keep the cash, you know, the cash coming, uh, cash coming in, but great. Yeah. Great question. Okay, so um, I'll I'll wrap this up. Thanks for uh, joining us uh, in the evening. If you're on the we, uh, the East Coast or middle of the afternoon, and for Mikael, who's in Sweden, it's like eleven o'clock at night. So thanks for jumping in on this. But one thing that uh, I wanted to share with you, if you saw my IG video uh, earlier this week, I actually just did a podcast with um, I think it was the Blue Collar Nation guys. Um, and they were asking me like, Hey, what do you, what, what's your message to contractors uh, right now? And the message is I would be spending money on marketing my business. It's proven that, that, that contractors that market their business during down economies, uh, sustain and accelerate after the market, um, rebounds. Um, but specifically if you're hiring and if you've been, been looking to hire somebody, this is a great time to do recruiting. Now, understand what I'm saying is you are recruiting, you are not hiring. There are a lot of people that are gonna be laid off or are laid off and they're gonna be looking for jobs. This is a great time to have, start having conversations with those. They're gonna have problems that you can solve when things get picked back up, especially if you're not really seeing a slowdown and your projects are you know, sustained. Now is a great time to bring that person on, even if, it's a little bit slow on your projects. Hey, guess what? We all been 
complaining that, hey, I don't have any time to train this person. Well, you do now. Um, so put that message out here. And, and this is, why are you bowing? Why are you ducking I, your head? I, I panicked this week and pulled my job ad down. Don't do it. it Cause you're not hiring. You're recruiting. There's a difference, yeah. right? You can say, Hey, you want to have conversations just like we were talking about before with Corey, you want to have conversations that, that build relationships with people. Same thing with your, your next great employee is going to come from this, I promise you, if you have out the right message. So here's my formula. This is actually going to be in the hiring course that comes out in the Built to Grow program. So I'll give you a, kind of a, a, a little teaser on that. So take notes. We're recording this. We'll post this in the, uh, in the shop talk sessions there. Uh, but here's the formula of the job ad. It's the problem, the pain, the plan, the success, and the call to action. So I'll repeat that. The problem, you want to state the problem that that person is having. And so somebody that has just been laid off, the problem they're having is I just got laid off. So the thing that you advertise is, did you just get laid off? <laughs> like it's not complicated, but you don't want to tell it from your perspective. This is at least the beginning of the job ad. This is what's going to stop the scroll, right? When someone says, hey, we're looking for some, I mean, nowadays, when you're hiring this, you know, people say, Hey, we're hiring. Um, that might stop the scroll, but in general, you want to identify the problem that they're having. The problem is they just got laid off. The problem that they're having is they're frustrated because they got laid off and they're sick and tired of working in the service industry because they've been through this before or whatever. And so you're gonna say, are you looking for a career change? Are you looking to, to get professional career development? Like that's going to state the problem. Then you want to agitate the pain a little bit saying, are you frustrated with whatever the problem was? You're just kind of restating that, but you're kind of agitating the pain. And if, if you feel uncomfortable about this, I'm sorry, this works, okay? Um, that's probably why each and every one of you are in some program of mine or whatever is because I didn't talk about all of the great things that I can do. I talked about the problems you're having in your business and Noah's smiling because he knows I sucked him in a couple of years ago on this. Um, but I talked about the problem that you're probably having, Daniel smiling too, right? Because this, this is the kind of copy, it's just copywriting, this works. State the problem, agitate the pain. Then the next part is the plan. Don't go into listing your job description yet. What you wanna do is say, when you come to work for us, here's how we're gonna solve this problem and this pain. We're gonna do this, we're gonna give you training, in six months, here's where, or, yeah. so we're gonna, we're gonna give you a plan. In six months, you're gonna be doing this in our company. Then you're gonna do this, and then you'll be able to do this. One, two, three. Keep it to three, and then these are short little bullet points. So the pain, or sorry, the problem, agitate the pain, then give them a plan of success. When you come work here, you'll start as a project manager. Then you can become an estimator, and maybe you're gonna be you know, superintendent, I don't know, whatever your, whatever that plan is, doesn't have to be real complicated. Then they're going to be like, Oh yeah, that's exactly what I want. And then you hit them with the success, the success part, meaning here's what our project managers do. Here's what a lead carpenter does. Here's what an apprentice, here's what a laborer does. This applies to any position that, that you're going to, uh, that you're going to be hiring for paint a picture of success of where they're going to be six months and 12 months from now when they come work for you. Then after that, then you list what the job is and the description and all of those technical parts of it. You know, you know, five years experience, zero experience, blah, 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 whatever. All of that is designed to get them to stop scrolling and to engage with you. And then the final thing there, make sure there is a call to action. It's marketing 101. And what that call to action needs to be, don't say, send me a resume. People lie on their resumes, not intentionally, but they're, but what, what you should come up with is, and your call to action saying, if you want all of these things, we're looking for really awesome people. Here's what you need to do. Send me an email and tell me why you want to work for our company. What that's going to force them to do is go do some research on what your company is. So make sure that they can find you and all those things and just say, send me an email of why you want to work here. And then we'll talk about the next steps. Don't ask for a resume, especially if you're hiring for field personnel. There's a reason that they've chosen that career. They don't want to sit in front of a computer. So they don't have a good resume. So if you're, you're going to create stress for them and they're going to call their mom and say, hey, mom, can you help me with the resume, right? When all you want to do is start that conversation with them, right? So the problem, the pain, 
the plan, picture of success, and then give them a call to action and just make it really simple. Something simple. That's yeah. Go ahead, Daniel. Just a uh, quick question. So right now, trying to stay lean going into uncertain times. What if we're not quite ready or in a good position to bring anybody else on, but we're looking to recruit, you know, how do you kind of recommend handling that? Oh, you're always ready to recruit. Like, and just tell them the truth. I mean, everybody, you know, have this conversation to say, Hey, um, we got some projects lined up. And when, when those things come online, everything's kind of getting shut down and get that, but you want to have this conversation with them. Um, you're not going to hire them right now, but you want to be having a conversation. You want to, you want to create a pool of candidates to draw from. So just tell them the truth. We don't have any open positions right now, but when things take off, as we project that they're going to maybe in two months, maybe in three months or whatever, we want to be able to pull the trigger. And as soon as those things come back online, we want to get you in here and get you trained if you're the right person. So right now we just want to have a couple of conversations with you over the next six to eight weeks, maybe meet with you and have a cup of coffee. Well, I guess you'd have to like, you, you can't meet with anybody anymore, but you meet them on zoom, right? Inter introduce them to this sort of thing and just say, Hey, we're just recruiting right now. And, and we're interested in talking to you because you, it seems like you're a pretty awesome person and you seems like you might be a good fit for our company. So let's have a couple of conversations over the next six weeks. Would you be open to that? And people are going to, people that are looking for jobs are going to be like, yeah, it's great. Now you may lose them because someone else will hire them, but at least you're starting to develop that, that, um, that pool of candidates. And you're always recruiting, always recruiting doesn't stop. The hiring, well, you got to have the open position and you got to have some money to, you know, to be able to do that and the projects lined up. So remember that you're, you're always recruiting. Same thing. You're always marketing. Uh, all right. Yeah. Go ahead, Daniel. Uh, just a quick question about the marketing. Um, what do you see right now? I mean, my state shut down. Um, a lot of people, you know, maybe they're thinking about holding on to their money uh, as opposed to spending it right now. What do you see as some low hanging fruit for marketing? And Facebook ads or Google ads, or what would you really recommend for being tactful at this part, uh, this point in time with people and, and potential clients? Yeah. I'm okay. So this is, this is just me talking to a bunch of business owners. I'm not going to be tactful. I'm going to be aggressive. I mean, again, but I'm going to be aggressive with the value. And like what Drew had said earlier, there's so much negativity out there. And here's another thing, and I don't mean to offend anybody, but there are a lot of people in and again, I'm just looking at the construction industry. That's kind of where I focus on. But there are a lot of people in the construction industry that are inserting themselves into a conversation I believe they have no expertise in. They need to shut the hell up. And I actually had a conversation with Shelby. Our company policy is we do not talk about the coronavirus at all. I'm not an epidemiologist. I'm not in public health. My wife actually is. She has a master's degree in public health. But she knows way more about this stuff than I do. But Unless we're asked a, a direct question by somebody, our company policy is we do not insert ourselves into the conversation. There's so much noise around there about that. Um, but what I'm, what I'm saying to you is to be aggressive about positivity. So just, get, just be the one contractor in your area that is promoting positivity, meaning like, hey, things are shut down right now, but they will come back online. And when they come back online, you are not going to be able to get your project on a contractor schedule. First of all, because this will put some contractors out of business. I'm talking about these bottom, bottom feeders that they call themselves contractors, right? So I wanna be positive about that, about what's coming, about the good things that are coming. When things start stacking back up again, you're not gonna be able to get on our schedule. Now I'm not gonna say it like that, but it's just saying now is the perfect time to interview your contractors. Now is the perfect time to talk about those projects. There's no charge for those things and we'll be able to meet you virtually. In fact, we've got a dialed in process that's going to take care of your project when it does come online. I'm going to advertise that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, everything's shut down. That means we're still working. We're still serving our clients. In fact, here's how we can serve you. Let's have a conversation. And it's the same thing about recruiting. Like, yeah, they're not going to hire you right now, but I want to recruit a bunch of customers as well. And so I'm going to come up with creative ways to spend my time to have lots of conversations with people. And a lot of them will fall through the cracks or they're, they, you know, they, they aren't serious, you know, they aren't serious, but I want to practice that message right now. And that's the best thing you can do is like, maybe you get someone to respond to it. That's not really serious, but the key is they responded. 
And, and so that's like what I, what Shelby and I have been working on. Like when we do marketing, like especially the way that we market through email, the goal of any email marketing campaign is not, the goal is not for someone to read the email. If we were concerned about that, then we would fail. The goal is to get someone to open the email, right? And so we, if you see this, our subject lines and preview text, that takes a lot of work. So all I'm saying is you got to understand what the goal is. The goal isn't to sell necessarily right now. It'd be great if it's a byproduct, but the, the goal is to engage. The goal is to add in value, is, is to add value and get people to respond to you in some ways. So you're going to have to test out a bunch of different messages. But I think a great message, like what Drew said earlier, is positivity is going to win. Not Pollyanna, pie in the sky sort of stuff, but hey, we're, I mean, we're freaking Americans, man. This thing's going to bounce back. Just look at history. So just work really hard on building those relationships and getting that positive message out there in the next 60 days. And I think you'll be, you'll have more work than you can handle and you'll be ready to pull the trigger on people to hire because you've recruited them now. And you, you're going to grab, you're going to be able to grab up some great clients, some great projects and some great people to, to work for you. So again, 12 week year, man, just plan out the next 12 weeks, come up with some creative ideas on how to put yourself out there, uh, be positive about it. And I think that you'll, you'll see that, you know, come back to you in waves. Because listen, if this thing, I think I said it earlier, this thing lasts six months or a year, we're probably all screwed. Like it, it, it's going to be like, you won't have to worry about any of this. We're all going to be pivoting and changing and doing a bunch of different, bunch of different stuff. But just think about the next 60 days and kind of plan that out. Is that helpful? So, um, and I can, I can just tell you it, like in, from personal experience that for me, the whole reason that I'm able to do what I'm able to do now is, was, be, was through adversity. So for some of you might be aware, some of you may not be aware, but in 2008, my wife was diagnosed with MS, pretty devastating uh, for our family to have to kind of go through that and deal with that. Uh, but a few years later, I mean, we were broke. We didn't have, the medical bills were stacking up. And then my wife got a brain scan that, that came back that said, oh, you know, by the way, her, you know, her brain is dying. Uh, the day after that, I quit my job. And I said, you know, it's just, it's very clarifying. Like what I'm doing now, that this isn't what life is about. So I'm going to try and create some value for some other people. And I think that I've got, you know, um, I think that I've got some value to add. Uh, but uh, it wasn't because I had some sort of plan, but through that adversity gave me absolute clarity. So this time, whatever adversity you might be going through in your business, just understand this adversity is going to provide you with clarity. It's going to provide you with creativity and the ideas that come out over the next 60 days are going to be the thing that's going to launch your business when things are back to the, the new normal. Um, I know it's hard, but I, I'm telling you from personal experience, um, without that adversity, without that desperation, it didn't kick into that creative part of the brain to say, you know what, if we're all screwed, and, and, and everything's going to tank. I'm going to go out trying to do everything that I can. I'm hell. I'm going to hire employees. I'm going to go get projects. I'm going to be aggressive with my positivity and try to share the value and the professionalism that I have. And I'm telling you, it's just going to come, it's going to come back. Or like Drew said, you're going to find new services that you'll be able to offer and be like, Holy crap, I can make a million dollars from, from being a handyman or whatever. Um, so don't, don't let the negativity stand, stand in the, stand in the way. One thing that I want to ask permission, uh, if it's okay with everybody in this group is, I mean, you guys have all paid here, uh, uh paid to be here, uh, as part of this, but I'd like to take the recording of this and post it publicly. Um, but if there's one person that says, no, you know, this is, this is just for people in here. I'm totally fine with that. But, and this is, I'm not going to use this as a lead generation. I'm literally going to put the video out there so people can watch it. I don't want their email. I just wanted to see that like now is a time for contractors to get together, start talking about ideas and being creative about how to uh, um, promote their, their business. Is that cool with everybody? All right. I got thumbs up from everybody. The people that don't have their cameras on, well, you don't count. So anyway, all right. Um, awesome. We got, uh, I think shop talk sessions coming up next week. I never, Shelby, I never look at the schedule before I do these things. I should be more prepared. I know.